You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Thinking Talmudist Podcast. All right, welcome back, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Thinking Talmudist series, the Thinking Talmudist Podcast. And in the past uh, few weeks, we've been talking about signs of the times of Messiah. What are the telling signs that Mashiach is coming, that Messiah is coming? So just to understand, my grandfather would always say, Mashiach is walking the streets now. Mashiach is here. Mashiach always was here, meaning Mashiach is a designated person who is going to be the revealer of Hashem to the world and the entire world. And if you take a moment to focus on the prayer of Aleinu L'Shabeach, uh, which is at the end of our prayer, you'll see exactly what the transformation is going to be when the entire world recognizes, wow, we didn't realize Hashem is here, the Jewish people are His chosen people, and we shouldn't have messed with them. And uh, he'll tell the those who are occupying our land of Israel to get out and they'll run. They'll run for the hills. Or they'll run for the deserts. And they're just going to disperse and scatter because they know that there's no more monkey business. Right now we're in a time of confusion, in a time of blurry vision. And the Talmud is going to share with us a few more signs, telling signs, that the times of Messiah are near. Okay, the Talmud now continues. We are on 98a. And the Gemara enumerates further signs of the Messiah's imminent arrival. Rabbi Hanina said, Rabbi Han- Amar Rabbi Hanina, Ein ben David Ba, the son of David, who is Messiah, will not come until a fish will be sought for a sick person and it will not be found. As it is stated, then I will make their waters settle and cause their rivers to flow like oil. What's going to happen then? And then the verse says after that, and that is a verse in Ezekiel 32.14. Right after that, it says, "By Yamahu Atzmiach Karen Lebeis Yisrael," and after that, it is written, "On that day, I will cause power to sprout for the house of Israel." So, what's going to happen? Mashiach is going to come when all the fish are going to be swimming in oil, so they're going to die, and therefore, it's not going to be fish for the people who sick people who need fish. You're not going to be able to find it. Amar Rabbi Chama Bar Chanina, Rabbi Chama said, "Ain ben David ba." The son of David will not come. That the son of David will not come until the petty government has ceased from Israel. What's the petty government? What's the petty government? The Knesset. The Knesset. The Knesset is, you know, it's funny. My grandfather would always say that the entire State of Israel, every single person, if we invested time and efforts, everyone can return to Hashem, except for the members of Knesset. He said they're so corrupt and they're so filthy from the yuck of politics that he doesn't think that they're capable of. But obviously Hashem does think that they are. But still, it's a very, the the government in Israel is just so, so, so unfortunately replete with pettiness. Shenemar v'choras hamazmeros. As it, it states, he will cut off the shoots with shears. V'ksiv basre, and it says immediately after that, Ba'esaihi yuval shai lahashem tzvokos am mimushach umorat. And then it says, at that time, a gift shall be brought to the Lord of hosts, a people pulled and torn. So the people pulled and torn is us. Look at how we've been uh, taken hostage. I think that till every single one of our hostages are returned, we're all held hostage. They are representing each and every one of us. And we need those, like we mentioned previously, in our Jewish pride, we need those merits to be released from that from that bondage. Omar Ziiri Omar Rabbi Hanina. Ziiri said in the name of Rabbi Hanina, Ein ben David ba'ach yichlu gase haruach mi Yisrael. 
the son of David will not, will not come until the arrogance is eliminated from Israel. All of the arrogant people will be eliminated from Israel. Shenemar ki oz asir mikirbecha alize ga'avosecha. As it is stated, for then I will remove from your midst those who delight in your arrogance. And what does it say immediately after that? V'ksiv basrei. And this is in Safanya, chapter 3, verse 11. It says right after that, V'hish'arti v'kirbecho am oni v'dal v'chosu b'shem Hashem. It says, the verse right next to it says, And I will leave in your midst a humble and forbearing people, and they will take refuge in the name of Hashem. So we see that there are some uh, components. Now, it's very hard for us to know. We're going to bring more examples of more things of what was required to happen in this world in order for Mashiach to come. But we know one thing for sure. And this is something that we've mentioned many, many times. There is nothing that's written in the Talmud that is just written for the sake of poetry or for the sake of just a nice, cute writing, a cute thought. It's written, it's there for us to know that this is real. So what's real about thinking of there's not going to be any more fish for sick people? What does that mean? What does fish represent? What does sick people represent? It says that until the, there's going to be no more arrogance, there's not going to be any more petty government. So that... There's many, many commentaries that talk about this. Bring light to what does this mean? This is very important for us to know that there is a very, very clear metaphor. It's a metaphor. Fish represents something. The oil represents something. The petty government means represents something. And the arrogance represents something. And each one of these things that we mentioned previously in our previous episodes of the coming of Messiah, also, it's not necessary. Nothing is to be taken literally and nothing is not to be taken literally. Okay? Amar Rav Simlai Mishum Rebbe Lazar Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Simlai said in the name of Rebbe Lazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, Ein ben David Ba, the son of David, will not come. kol vishotrim Yisrael. Until all the judges, the son of David will not come until all the judges and officers cease from Israel. No one will enforce the law, and a state of anarchy will prevail. <clears throat> Yad Ramah intimates that the Gemara refers to all judges. Marsha, however, implies that the reference is only to corrupt and ignorant judges. For he draws a parallel between the Gemara, this Gemara and the, a different Gemara in Shabbos that teaches us that it's only specific ones that are no longer going to. Okay, but that, that's the truth is, we see that now going on in America already. We have judges who don't want to judge on cases that are, to them, seemingly not important. But to each and every one of us is important. Like if people steal from a store in, in San Francisco, they're not going to prosecute them if it's less than the value of $950. That's crazy. So people can come and people can loot and steal from your store because it's less than $950. There was one store owner who didn't yet leave. Many did, but who didn't yet leave. He said that he's raising his prices to be whatever the price of the item is plus $950. And then when you pay at the checkout, he gives you a rebate of $950. So that way, it's prosecutable if, uh, if someone were to do something silly. Either way, what we're talking about is a time of total chaos. That's really what, it, what we're seeing is everybody agrees on the specifics, maybe not. On the different signs, maybe not. But on the general picture, there will be total chaos in the world. Total chaos. Okay, the Gemara cites a teaching based on the next verse. Amar Ula, what does it say right after that verse? It says, Ein Yerushalayim nifteis ela bitzdaka. Jerusalem will not be redeemed except through charity. Shenemar tzion b'mishpa tifte ushavel bitzdaka. Zion will be redeemed through justice and her returnees through 
charity. Having mentioned the elimination of judges, the Gemara digresses on this point. The Gemara now says, Amar of Papa of Papa said, I butle if the arrogant disappear, butle amgushe, then the amgushe, what is the amgushe? Either the sorcerers or the fanatical idol worshippers will disappear. I butle dayani, if the judges disappear, butle gazir pate. Who's gazir pate? The idolatrous judges who used physical force against the Jews. So the script, the scriptural allusions to these teachings, e butle yihiri butle amgushe. If the arrogant disappear, the amgushe will disappear. Dixiv, as it states in the verse, I will clean away your dross as though with soap, and I will remove all your tin. The e butle dayani butle gazir pate. Right? If the judges disappear, the Gazir Pate will disappear. And he brings a verse for that as well. The Gomorrah resumes its discussion about the advent of the Messiah with a series of three teachings from Rabbi Yochanan. So um, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Imra Isodor Shemismayet Vaholech Chakelo. If you see a generation that is dwindling, expect Messiah to come. Oh, we'll find out. What does dwindling mean? It is becoming increasingly impoverished. And it brings a verse, Shenemar Vesam Onitoshia, as it as it states, and the impoverished nation shall you save. Referring to the Almighty, Mashiach will come and he will save an impoverished nation. Um Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said, Imra Isodor Shetzorus Rabos Boosalov, Kanor Chakelo. Listen to this, very powerful. If you see a generation upon which numerous troubles come like a river, expect Messiah. And there's a verse for that as well. And then one more from Rabbi Yochanan, Ein ben David ba elabedor shekulo zakai o kulo chayav. The son of David will only come in a generation that is either entirely virtuous or entirely guilty. If you have half and half, it doesn't work. And there are scriptural sources for that that says, And your people are all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. That's when the nation, when the generation, all righteous, but when they're all, but when they're all guilty. He saw that there was no man and he was amazed that there was no intercessor. And it is also written, for my sake, I will act. So the three things that the Gemara says here are the the bottom line, according to Rabbi Yochanan. Number one is that the generation will be, will be dwindling. And what did we say? That's impoverished. Number two, that many, many troubles will be overflowing like a river onto the Jewish people. And thirdly, in a generation that is entirely virtuous or entirely guilty. So what what I think we need to learn and understand from this is that the Talmud also tells us not to be busy trying to figure out when Mashiach comes. That shouldn't be our concern, our worry of when Mashiach, Mashiach comes. What we do know is that every single mitzvah we do brings merit to the world. And there's nothing that's more desirable to the Almighty than the merits that we perform. The mitzvahs that we perform, the things that we do, the good deeds, the selfless acts of kindness, of charity, of just doing a mitzvah, of connecting with Hashem. There's nothing more powerful than that. And that brings the Mashiach. So, The Talmud already states that there were many generations that thought that that's it. Mashiach, we have all the signs for Mashiach to be here. We have all the signs. And Mashiach didn't come in those generations. The generation needs the merit to it. I think it's safe to say that the the challenges that we're facing now, the roller coaster that each and every one of us are experiencing on a daily basis, whether it be with the terrible initial tragedy of, of October 7th, and then everything that's been going on since, 
and the hostage crisis every day. Another roller coaster of are they releasing them? Are they not releasing? Are they going back to war? Are they not going back to war? Are they doing a permanent ceasefire back and forth? It, we're seeing that there's chaos in the world. Hashem is trying to wake us up. That's our job. Our job is to wake up, to do everything we can, to deserve, to merit the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. Amen.